Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Frank Duvall, and he is W0BIW in Boulder, Colorado. We may have crossed paths back when I was a member, in fact, I was the treasurer of the uh, Boulder Amateur Radio Club. Uh, that's quite some years ago. Uh, he says, hi Dave, I have a 700 foot transmission cable made of LMR 600 UF that connects to 50 feet of RG8 that runs up the tower. The cable runs up a mountain to a ridge where the tower is located. There is a five band beam on top of this tower. Before we jump into Frank's question, I would like to pay a special thank you to Marvin Tenenbaum. He is uh, a very recent patron on patreon.com. That means he helps support this channel. If you would like to become a patron as well, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash ke0og and look for a method that works for you. Now let's take a look at uh, what he's got going here. I'm going to draw a picture of it. Okay, he's got some sort of a mountain ridge behind him. Here's his house. And this cable, which I'm going to put sort of in purplish here, this cable is 700 feet long. And it is uh, LMR 600, which means it's very low loss. And he has this thing going up to, let's see, let's draw in the tower. It's got a tower with a beam antenna on it, okay? And he brings this Okay, where'd it go? Okay, he brings this up to the base of the tower and then there is 50 feet up the tower to here, and that is RG8. Now, RG8 is an older cable that um, is um, got a, uh, it's, it's, it dates from World War II. It works just fine. It's a low loss cable. Okay, this is ultra low loss cable, LMR 600 here. Six hundred. That they make cables going on up, but this cable is uh, very thick. It's thicker than LMR 400, which itself is a low loss cable. So if he's working at HF. His losses here are very low and very low here too. Now, if he ran RG8 all the way to the bottom, he'd have higher losses, but here he's not going to have that kind of loss. LMR 600 times microwave, and he's got the UF version of the cable. And so the matched loss uh, per 100 feet at um, 10 megahertz is 0 0.2 dB per 1,000 feet. No, per 100 feet. 0 0.2 per 100 foot. So let's just write this down. So this is a loss of 0 0.2 dB per 100 feet times 700 feet. So we're going to multiply this by 71.4 dB loss up the hill here. Now the RG8 cable listed up here is, no, that's RG6, RG8. It's in the 1.2, 1.3 range per 100 foot. And we've only got 50 foot, so we'll add 0 0.6 dB to that, and that would be about... 2 dB total loss. Okay, so 
So if we look at this situation here, he has remarkably low loss. How could he get less loss? By going ladder line, okay? But then you'd need balance and stuff like that. But this works very well, can handle quite a bit of power, okay? So now let's turn to his questions. The first question he has is, is it possible to get a total SWR measurement at the shack in the valley? Absolutely. Just look at the, uh, put your uh, SWR meter right there, uh, right after your uh, transmitter or uh, amplifier, and measure the coax looking up the hill. That'll give you your total uh, reading. Note that the 2, BB, 2 dB of loss means you'll have 2 dB of power loss going up, so you're heating up your cable a titch. Now, um, and on the way back, the power also loses 2 dB. So a lossy cable, and uh, just, you know, because of the length of this, it's a somewhat lossy cable. Uh, it's going to make your SWR look better than it really is. Okay, is it also possible to get a total impedance using an impedance bridge? Um, if you use just about any antenna indicator is going to show not only SWR, but the complex impedance that you're looking at. Okay, so that will give you the impedance which will consist of the resistive part and the reactive part. And the reactive part can be either capacitive, which is generally indicated with a minus, and uh, if the meter indicates plus or minus, a lot don't. And uh, reactive, uh, inductive reactants, uh, if it's positive. Okay, so you can get that. Um, now, if you have a tuner, if you have it, it lined up this way, it should be lined up this way. If you rig, uh, which goes to your amp, which goes to your SWR meter, which goes to your tuner, which goes to the antenna literally at the top of the hill. Okay, SWR here, tuner. Now, if you were to take the, put the tuner in bypass, you can measure the actual SWR of what you're seeing total here. Okay, if you put this uh, out of bypass and back into tune, you can tune this for practically uh, one to one uh, at uh, any given frequency, and it'll be under 1.5 to one across the entire band, okay? So if you measure it here, you're looking into the impedance of the tuner plus the coax plus the antenna, okay? Now, if you um, put it here, you're just looking at the coax plus the antenna. Now, if this is 50 ohms, if you've got this thing tuned as close as you can get to 50 ohms, it's going to look, it'll look like 50 ohms down here. Okay, so let's go back and look at these questions. Okay, to know what condition the LMR cable is in, is it necessary to disconnect it from the RG8 and leave it open or apply a 50 ohm load? 50 ohm load. Lug your um, dummy load. This is my dummy load. It'll handle 200 watts indefinitely and up to 1,000 intermittently. Okay, so you can apply the 50 ohm load up there and then take the SWR. You should see 50 ohms across the band, all the way across the band. Or can the condition be determined when cables and beam are connected? No, because if the cable and the beam are connected, you've got the reactive element in there uh, which is the antenna, and that's going to show up. To know the SWR and impedance of the beam, is it advisable to take this measurement at the bottom of the tower on the RG8 cable? Well, then you've got 50 feet of RG8, and you're measuring the combination of the cable. Now, the cable is not a half wavelength on any of the bands. 
And so therefore it has a reactance which will affect the impedance that you see at the antenna. If the antenna is 50 ohms, it doesn't matter the length of cable, you'll see 50 ohms. But if you want to know the true impedance at the antenna, you need a half or multiple of half wavelength, a half wavelength, a half electrical wavelength of the uh, coax because the way that works is whatever impedance is up here, you'll see that impedance down here. Now note that it only works at one frequency. Okay, so if that's connected to the antenna and you measure down here, you will actually be measuring the real impedance of the antenna itself. Okay, now that's very hard to do because you actually almost have to measure out a piece of test cable because uh, each piece of cable, the velocity factor varies a little bit. So you multiply the length of the cable by the velocity factor to get the physical length of, yeah. To compute the length of a half wave of cable, you need to know the velocity factor, okay? Take a half wavelength at the frequency you want, and this is not the 468 formula because that assumes a velocity factor of 0.5, uh, I'm sorry, 0.95, which is not valid for coaxial cables. So you have to take the velocity factor of that into account in order to measure it. Now, with your analyzer, most analyzers will tell you the electrical length of the cable. And you want to get it so that it's just a half of a wavelength long. Attach that, that means climbing the tower and doing that. It can work. I think that's too much trouble for you in this situation. If you are observing a high SWR in the station, if you measure it without the tuner in there, you can be sure that the actual SWR at the antenna is worse. Okay, not by huge leaps and bounds, but if it's pretty close to 50 ohms, you've got things pretty well set up on that beam, okay? Um, and then you've got your tuner down in the shack. The ideal place for the tuner would be at the feed point, failing that at the base of the tower. Now that's an awful long ways and you'd have to be able to control the tuner through the coax, get it power and things like that. There are tuners that will do this. Not, I don't know of any for a thousand watts, but for 100 watts, there are several out there called DX Engineering or uh, called a ham radio outlet and talk to them about what kind of tuner you could put up there at the base of the tower. That way your, your um, 700 foot of cable uh, kind of gets out of the equation because it only ever sees 50 ohms. And so you won't have an extra standing wave on that. And then the antenna at the base of the tower can tune the combination of the tower and that 50-foot uh, impedance transformer to get that down to 50 ohms. If everything is at 50 ohms, you're in great shape, okay? So there's a suggestion for what you can do with that. Uh, I suspect that there are some issues, which is why you are asking the uh, question in the first place. Uh, I would, uh, if you need to climb the tower, then I would suggest putting the antenna tuner down at the bottom of the tower, having somebody down there to read out the SWR. Now, whenever you're doing tower work, make sure, and tower work is never something to be done alone. Make sure that you have a safety observer whose only job is to call 911 in the event of a problem. Um, do not give that person any other job like photographing or something like that. Get somebody else to do that. Uh, measuring the impedance touching up the antenna is a great club activity. All you have to do is uh, provide the hot dogs, buns, and, and uh, barbecue, and they'll be happy to come out and help. Okay, so I think we've addressed your question. I'm trying to 
get it from a number of points and talk a little bit about what happens with that LMR uh, 600, which is very expensive cable, and look at how we compute the overall transmission line loss and so on. Okay, so uh, Frank, I think that is what we can do with your question today. And there you have it. If any of you would like to help support this channel financially, you can go to decaster.com slash support. There's a tip jar there for a one-time uh, contribution. Not contribution. We can't use the word contribution because I'm not a charity. Uh, I do pay taxes on all the money that is uh, uh, sent to me via these means. And uh, you can also become a subscriber uh, using the Patreon feature there for a monthly tip. And, um, you know, there are other ways you can do it uh, when you're watching the videos. And, of course, if you are on uh, watching the live stream, which we try to have every Thursday evening, there's a way there to uh, uh, monetize a comment where you can, like, put, you know, 10 bucks in the comment. It does flag it to me that that comment came with money. And yes, I will admit, I do pay those comments more attention. Although, uh, I try to get every comment and not just the ones that are uh, monetized. But thank you. And best of luck to all of you. And until we next meet, 73. <laughs>